Hello folks, my name is Phil Sturgeon and I'm here to show you how Stoplight Spectral works. Spectral is a tool that can look at all sorts of JSON and YAML um, to give you opinions on, based on what it finds, um, which can be pretty open-ended. So we're going to walk through some real examples of, of how you might want to use that. So a rule set is a set of rules that can look at structured data like JSON or YAML. There is a bunch of popular formats out there that are used in API design and development um, called API descriptions, like uh, OpenAPI and Async API. So Spectral has a lot of built-in support for both of those formats and JSON schema, which they both use. Um, so you can use those built-in rule sets to find out if your OpenAPI or Async API is valid. But beyond finding out if it's valid, you can also find out if it's useful if it follows your organizational design decisions and you know you might have a, an API style guide that you could implement using Spectral. Um, and it can also tell you if your API is secure and potentially a whole bunch of other things. So it can do all sorts, but let's have a, let's have a look. The first thing you wanna do is install Spectral. You can use it in a bunch of different ways. You could you could use the VS Code extension. You could use the JetBrains plugin. Um, obviously, the the Stoplight platform and Studio tools have have Spectral built in. So when you're getting feedback about your API, that's powered by Spectral. But a lot of people use it in the command line, and that's the easiest to demonstrate. So we'll just have a look at that. You can install it with npm or yarn. Doesn't really matter. And then the next thing you want to do is create a local rule set. The concept of creating a local rule set is loosely based off of ESLint um, and, and other similar kind of code linting tools, but linting code and linting open API is the same, same idea really. Um, you're just automating opinions and, and distributing them so other people can share those same opinions and not have to worry about them. So what we want to do is create a local .spectral.yaml file, you can use JSON if you like create this local file and that tells Spectral where to look for the rule set. This Spectral.yaml file needs to go wherever your open API definitions live. Uh, I like to put those in the same repository as, as my code so that when I'm changing my code, I can change my API descriptions at the same time. But wherever your open API lives is fine. And we're gonna create .spectral.yaml and we're going to extend, it's an array, we're going to extend spectral OAS. OAS is short for Open API Specification. Um, and by extending that, we can now run the spectral lint and point it to the Open API definition. Right, and it looks like I've got a bunch of security issues. Um, or not really security issues, more like I've, I've, I've written bad open API. Um, so looking at the path, this is paths upload post. Let's go and fix that in my code. And because I've got VS Code uh, Spectral, it's telling me the same thing in here as well. The handy red line, which makes it easier to see. I think that's fixed that. Run it again. Great. Well, I've got rid of the errors. I've got a couple of warnings. Less of an issue. Uh, operation must have non-empty tags array on the upload. Ah, uh, yeah. I added this upload endpoint and forgot to add. Where are you? Forgot to add, add tags, which will make it look a bit funny in most documentation tools. Yep. Great. Oh. And then uh, I'm referencing a tag that I have not created. All right. Brilliant. No errors, no warnings. All good. Now, this is telling me that my open API is valid, which is helpful. I don't want to be publishing mistakes and I want it to work in whatever tools I use later down the line. But how can I find out if my open API is useful? And what does that even mean? Well, someone's got to write down some opinions to create a style guide. Um, and who's more opinionated than APIs you won't hate? Um, I have got a style guide that I made over here. And instead of putting it into the .spectral.yaml, you can just try rule sets out. Um, you can just uh, kind of pop the URL in and run it with the, just stands for rule set, 
switch. So I'm going to run this. Oh, and it looks like I've made a few mistakes. So this style guide is telling me that I need to have a slash health endpoint, which is useful for pool based monitoring and, and uh, all sorts of other status checking tools. And it's also told me that I forgot to define a root route, so I don't have get slash defined. So if anyone's trying to do Hatios, they look at my API and they have no idea where to go from there. That's not all that helpful. So cool, it's it's quite quite useful to get some opinions on, on whether it's useful or not. And those are only warnings, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. But beyond being useful, how can I make sure that my open API is secure uh, or that the API itself is secure? Well, there's a rule set for that as well. And there's a rule set for quite a lot of things. Um, if you look at the spectral readme, you can see the real world rule sets. And there's, um, there's one by Adidas, there's the APIs you won't hate one I mentioned, Azure, Box, DigitalOcean, Transcom. Those are a bunch of companies um, that are using spectral to define what they think are important. But there's another one that was added recently on, on this repository um, where I try and keep track of all of the spectral rule sets out there. And this is the OWASP API security rule set. So this one is based on the, so OWASP is a, a project that keeps track of all different security concerns and kind of ranks them and, and writes about them and educates people about them. And they have a specific category of, of security concerns called the API security project. So I've created a spectral rule set that gathers as many of those together um, as it can. Now, of course, because Spectral is looking at the open API definitions, it can't tell you what mistakes you've made internally in your code, but it can notice kind of obvious mistakes in, in the actual definition of the API. Um, and to see what that looks like, we can just grab this URL again, and we can do the same thing, pop that into the CLI. So here we go, quite a few security issues. This first error is telling me that I've not defined a 500 error response. Uh, now this comes from some advice in the OWASP um, guidance that says you really want to define schemas for all of your requests and responses and, and even your errors uh, so that you don't have unexpected things happening. Um, this is especially helpful if you define all of your errors and then use contract testing tools like Prism Proxy or anything else, any other assertion in your test suite. Um, you can make sure that the 500 something went wrong um, error messages match what you expect them to. You can make sure that you're getting a nicely formatted JSON error instead of getting a wonky Java backtrace in HTML. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, making sure you define them means that contract tools can then assert that they're correct. Um, same for all sorts of other error responses. Uh, this is letting me know here that my 429 response should be defined. OWASP advises that you set up good rate limiting. Uh, and so either I don't have any rate limiting running on this API, or I haven't mentioned that there is rate limiting running on the API, which is going to be confusing for consumers. Um, so either way, you want to make sure you define that. And then here we've got another rule. That, that one's just a warning, but here uh, this rate limiting rule is saying um, all 200 and 400 um, responses should define rate limiting headers. So you can use any of the standards out there. There's a IETF RFC draft for, for rate limiting headers um, or you know X hyphen rate limit like Google, but you should use one of those formats. And now the rest of these, there's a lot of, a lot of repeats of those on, on different URLs. Uh, oh, this one's letting me know I don't have any security schemes being used. That's not ideal. Um, if I was to pick a security scheme, it would then say, oh, I don't like HTTP basic or OAuth 1. Please use something more secure. So it can help guide a lot of people on their way. And now this is obviously an API that I've already built, but if, and it's in production running. Um, so getting feedback on that isn't all... Uh, it's helpful, but it would be more helpful if if I was getting this feedback when I was designing the API early on before the code was built. And that's something Spectral can help with too, because you can bake it into whatever editor you're using, get all of your Spectral feedback um, as you're designing uh, just the open API and, and avoid making those mistakes, um, which are then pushed to production 
uh, which could then be insecure or expensive to fix. So Spectral is a fantastic tool in your toolkit for the API design first workflow or for any sort of API standardization process that you're trying to work on. Thank you.